So, in honor of Valentine's Day today, which, you know, we're repping the holiday, I actually did something different with my coffee. Ideally, I would have done this with one that didn't have filling, but I didn't have one. So I have like these little Dove candies. This one is something with ganache on the inside. So I actually put it in my coffee and then let the coffee dispense onto it so it's melted. And I'm curious to see how it tastes. So we have the cute um, I Love You mug. We have new coffee with candy, a Valentine's Day candy. So let's try it out. It's really different than what my normal is, obviously. I also used, you saw me put in new salted caramel syrup. It's new syrup, like I've never tried that syrup before. So I don't know if what I'm tasting is the new syrup or if it's also the chocolate. I mean, it's a combination of both, obviously, but I can't tell, I can't tell them apart. Mm, I can taste the chocolate now when I said that. Is it okay if I'm lazy and I just talk up to you? Because I don't really feel like trying to fix the well that looks kind of gross there's like a like how the chocolate melted on top i'm too lazy to move the legs on the tripod <laughs> yeah i don't love it i wouldn't do it again like i don't know if you can see <sighs> that's a little weird for me but i don't love it like i wouldn't do it again but it's different for valentine's day which we enjoy actually do i like this now that i'm having like, more of it like today's valentine's day i sent a blit video i was gonna take myself out to eat or I was going to go to the movies. And while those are still not on the table, I ordered in breakfast. I'm waiting on breakfast to arrive because I actually got my proofreads back from my proofreader last night. And I just opened the file just to see how many I have. And I want to go through today. I want to dedicate the entire day to just going through these proofreads. Sometimes the things can be more stylistic, um, but I just want to see which ones are like word typos, Places where my grammar isn't right, um, any sentences that don't flow right. That's kind of what my main concern is. The um, more stylistic ones are kind of on the back burner for me right now. So I just want to go through and get all of that finalized, send it to my narrator for the narration, and get the files ready to send to ARCs and stuff. So yeah, I'm not sure if I like this, guys. The thing is, I have to do it all by hand because oh, this is so stupid also by hand one by one i should say i'm so stupid i'm so stupid okay hang on also i won't make you look at this angle anymore okay sarah sutton is dumb because so i sent my book to my proofreader and i know like you have to be hands off then like i personally have to be hands off then because when the proofreader gets back to you you know you could accept all the changes and then just copy and paste the document into your formatting file or just re-upload into a new formatting file um, that's what I normally do. I go through all the changes I want to keep and then I just press accept all and then I just automatically translate it into, you know, my document. <sighs> but, so when I was working on book four, I had to refer back to book three several times and I found a few continuity things that I remember changing and I found a few sentences I remember like, hmm, when I was making my quotes for my promotion materials, I remember thinking, hmm, I'd love to have it say this, this way, like maybe it's like one word or two words of a difference instead. So I changed it in the document, in the, for in the formatting document, which means if I copy and paste what the proofreader has, I'm losing those consistency changes, timeline changes, I'm losing the sentence structure that I changed. I'm like, when I realized that, I literally was like, Sarah, you're an idiot. Like, it's, you, mm. what I should have done is made it into a new document. Like, oh, change this line to this line. Oh, fix this word to this word. You know, like put it into a new document to reference after I reincorporated the proofreads. Because now I could, there's two options that both suck. So I can just like forego um, what I had changed and just copy and paste my proofreader's work into the new into my formatting document and say, oh wow, we'll have to see if I can remember everything that I changed, which I don't. Or the option is to go one by one through all 400 changes, additions, insertions, you know, everything that's different. I think there's like 400. So that's why I'm going through and finding the more imperative stuff. I'm going to go through every single thing. If it's not like a hugely overall impact, like a, a comma is put where a comma doesn't really need to be put, or if it's something like that, I probably won't change it. But because 
it's gonna be a long day it's gonna be it's gonna be a long day a lot of those things are small they're small and stylistic and they're not like overly necessary i had this idea so i have this one pretty proof copy of rebelling with the bad boy and i've seen a bunch of people doing it on instagram like annotating their books is that how you say it annotating annotating i said annotating and it sounded strange annotating doing their books like that with highlighters and like cute stickers and I don't have cute stickers but I do have highlighters and I have a sharpie pen so I'm gonna actually this is what I'm gonna do when I'm all done with my proofreading and like hands off with this book I'm gonna go back through and annotate this book and then I'm gonna do it as a giveaway so um I've never done that before but I thought it'd be really fun for this book the giveaway is gonna be over on Instagram though so make sure you're following my Instagram it is at Sarah May Sutton oh this looks so gross Look how gross that looks. That doesn't look appetizing. You guys see my DoorDash is coming. I'm starving. Also, y'all, I did it. I did exactly what I told myself I was not going to do. What? What? It's here 20 minutes early? Okay. Wow. That was so fast. I'm shook. Okay. So, I'm on page 30 of 366 we're gonna be here a while because it just takes it takes a while to comb through everything thankfully with word um there's like a line when it tells you there's a change that's been made i'll show you so when the editor makes a change or the proofreader makes a change it has this like line here um so you know you can reference that that's in this section and then when there's a comment there's this little comment box so but i wanted to talk to you about the sort of things that are more stylistic and what are like you know important so like obviously oh, i'm losing so many hairs it's because my hair is so long oh this one's attached still these ones are not hair so long it gets caught in everything when you're working with an editor you want to make sure that you are staying true to your voice and you are keeping what you want changing what you want um obviously change what's like important it's like what's grammatically incorrect and what is a typo and stuff but the editor's goal is to kind of like streamline things make things like less clunky too um and to, to check for typos and stuff so for me personally um i'm not too worried about things that like I'll give you the example that I just sound. I may not have my license yet, but it's all okay if I have someone like Gemma to keep me company. That was my initial line. So what the editor changed it to, it says, I may not have my license yet, but it's okay if I have someone like Gemma to keep me company. So they just cut the word all. So I wrote, it's all okay if I have someone, and they cut it to look like, it's okay if I have someone. So for me, that's not a necessary change. I don't think it hinders anything to keep the all. So that's what I look for when I'm doing these edits. Like, is it hindering it, the sentence, if I keep it? If not, then I'm going to keep it. And like, that's perfectly okay because like everybody has their own idea of what sounds right, um, which is totally okay. And, um, you know, trying to make things sound a little bit smoother, that's great. But I think in this instance, it's not necessary. Um, and so for small things like that, especially because it is in dialogue, um, so things like that I don't worry about and I'm not going to change. I, this is kind of like my last phase of editing. So I don't really want to do sentence structure editing if I don't have to. If something just is a, like has an extra word, you know, I'm just going to keep the extra word. But if it's a clunky sentence that doesn't really make sense, of course I will change it. Or if there's a word missing, I'll add that word. But uh, I just wanted to give an example of the more stylistic edits that I probably am not going to take unless it is a drastic enough change. Because, you know, I mean, I just wanted to share it because it's an interesting thing to talk about. And I feel like sometimes when you get an edit, you think you have to accept all of the changes. But like even any sort of edit, like if it's stuck, if it's true to how you want to tell a story, you can do it. But if you feel like, you know what, this is fine without it, that's okay too. So this, my proofreader has caught so many things so far. That's very embarrassing. Like just words missing that I literally am like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. How is this happening? How am I so bad at this? <laughs> it's funny how your brain just fills in stuff and that's why proofreaders are so important. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna be slouching because I have to like kind of be close to the screen. The ergonomics, is that what the word, that's not the word, what's the word? <laughs> Or is it ergonomic? Like, you know, when you're supposed to be like sitting upright and your head's supposed to be like, level with the computer. That's not going to be me today. When is it me ever? 
it's never me, but like it's not, it's definitely not going to be me today because I'm going to be looking like this the entire time for uh, 336 more pages. <sighs> happy Valentine's Day. This is an instance where I'm happy I'm single because this has to get done, like ASAP. I thought it was going to be coming tomorrow and I would have been way more stressed if it came tomorrow. Um, just because I think I have to have it finished by the 17th in order to get it in time for the Ingram Spark deadline. So for Ingram Spark, you have to have it submitted to proof to pre-order 10 business days in advance, which... Which later I do realize that my math here was not mathing, and I'm already too late. Stress. Let's turn on our K-pop. <laughs> Okay, so I was trying to pass it off, like a one-off thing, but I'm finding more instances where things are not lining up in my formatting document with the document that I sent my proofreader, which means there are differences, and I don't know what they are. Uh, why are they different? Why are they different? Like, why is this different? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, oh my gosh. So in the proofreading document, she says to add a dialogue tag here, but I'm like, oh no, I'll just move that sentence up onto the previous paragraph because then it fits. It should be on the previous paragraph. It shouldn't be on its own paragraph, that dialogue. And I went to go fix that in the formatted file and it's already fixed. Why is it already fixed? Why? I mean, it's great that it's fixed, but why is it? But this is probably like the fifth thing that I found that is different. I'm like, <gasps> there are also so many errors that I'm so embarrassed about. Like knowing that she saw these, I'm like, oh my gosh, no. I'm so sorry you see this. I swear my skill level is better than this. <laughs> so many errors, so many errors. I'm like, what is going on? Oh, my face is so dry. Dang it, winter. Okay, so I think it's like 2 o'clock. I've been doing this for what feels like forever, but ooh, I don't think it's been that long. Has it been two hours-ish? Probably a little less than two hours. My brain smush. I'm actually going through this a lot faster than I thought I would. On page 199 of 366, I am just starting chapter 16, but I'm going to take a break before I get back to it. I need to, I don't know what I need, but I just need to a hot minute to decompress. I was thinking about doing my makeup today since it's Valentine's Day, but like if I don't go anywhere, like is it worth it? I don't know. I feel like doing something. Maybe I'll go, maybe I will go to the movies. Maybe I'll go watch Titanic. It's $5 ticket Tuesday. Maybe I'll go watch Titanic. Is it worth it to go to the movies right now? I don't know. Like it's one of those things like I don't really have to go, but then part of me is like, should I push myself? Should I just do something that's different? You know what I mean? Like that's the problem with my like introvertedness and homebodiness like it sounds like a fun idea but like I wouldn't be upset if I didn't go so if I wouldn't be upset if I didn't go I don't feel desperate to go which means like I could stay home so I don't know what I'll do okay so it's 2 49 I ended up not taking a break I ended up just actually turning on um the publish and thrive podcast I switched music to the podcast and I feel like listening to the podcast when I'm doing this sort of like nitty-gritty stuff actually helps me focus a little better weirdly enough um, but I did focus a whole lot better and we're done. We finished. Wow. My eyeballs are not feeling much like eyeballs at the moment. <laughs> so that feels really good. About almost three hours of work. We finished through all the proofs. So what I'm going to do now is get the PDF. I am going to send it to the main, to the narrator. Actually, should I do it on Valentine's Day? <laughs> is that a little weird to send someone like an, uh job on valentine's day maybe i'll wait till tomorrow um but i actually i'm gonna go through now and oh i gotta fix my acknowledgements haha <laughs> it's the same acknowledgement section from dream of the boy next door i just had in filler <laughs> that would have been very embarrassing oh you know what i have to do if i want to do this if i want to do this set up the pre-order for book four to link it in the back of the book fudge i feel very nervous about writing the pre doing the pre-order though i feel very very nervous about it since the first draft's not done yet maybe i'll just make it super far in advance and then move it up when i have the chance to yeah because i feel nervous about that 
I hate that. I hate that part of... I Maybe I don't have to. I mean, I really don't have to, but... I don't know what to do. Yeah. It's literally not a Sarah Sutton release unless something goes wrong. At this point, it's getting so frustrating. And I have no one to blame but myself. And I'm so, so frustrated about it. In the back of my head, I knew that Ingram Spark, you have to upload, like, you want to upload your final files 10 business days before the book goes live. I knew that. I knew that. So I uploaded my files, my, my files, you know. I can't remember if it was before the proofreader or after the proofreader. It was, it was after the proofreader. So I uploaded the files. You have to approve Ingram Spark files when you upload them. So I uploaded them. They went through a check on Ingram Spark. And then you have to approve the file upload. I got the email about how I had to approve it. And did I do it as soon as I got that email? No. So now I'm sitting here, February 18th, and it's past the 10 business days deadline, which means, oh my god. I don't think I have a lot of paperback pre-orders. I think a lot of them are ebook pre-orders. From what I could tell, like Ingram Spark is only saying that there's two, but I don't think there's two. I would think there's more than two. It's just the unproved, I mean, just the unproved, for it's still bad, you know, it's, that's, and it has the acknowledgements from rebelling, from dreaming about the boy next door in the back of it. So it's just like, oh my god. Are you are you kidding? It's there's no one to blame but myself because I I should have stopped and I should have approved the files when I first got them. It occurred to me today I'm like, "Oh, I never approved those files." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh. I never approved those files." And the book probably they've already probably already started printing the old files, which is the old acknowledgments unproved. And there's no way for me to check. I'm such an idiot. I'm such an idiot. I'm such an I think I'm gonna stop doing paperback pre-orders because I feel like I have issues with it every single time. I had it, I had it all done. I just hadn't clicked approve. Okay, so I'm coming on now, sounding super nasally for one, uh, unfortunately, because that's not the best to sound when you're on a video. Um, and two, I'm, I'm recording it on my computer. That's why the quality suddenly looks a little bit different. Um, and that's why we have a little Sarah Sutton logo on the bottom. I don't know if I can take it off, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I wanted to give a little more insight into what happened with the paperback pre-order. Um, I have a video clip that came after this, but I was still kind of in the stressed out mode. And I feel like I wasn't explaining it very well, so I figured I'd come on here and explain it. No matter what, I was late. Um, you have to upload Ingram's Rock Files 10 business days before. And you hear me say that. For some reason, I got in my head that the 10 business days was the 17th. Um, if I had stopped and thought about it, obviously that's not true. Like, you know, math-wise, obviously that's not the case. Obviously that's not 10 business days before. Actually, you know what? I don't even know what 10 business days before would have been. One, two, three, ten. So the 14th. So Valentine's Day would have been the 10 business days before. And if they count Valentine's Day as a holiday, I don't know. But I had gotten it in my head that the 17th was my deadline. And like I said, I didn't stop to think about it. So like, it didn't occur to me that no, Sarah, like you're bad at math, but you're not that bad at math. So no matter what, um, I had uploaded the files to Ingram Spark on the 14th after I had proofread everything. And so you send the files to Ingram Spark. Ingram, Ingram Spark takes about a day to add a revision to approve it and send it back to you because you have to download the e-proof and review it and approve it yourself. I sent my files to Ingram Spark on Valentine's Day. Um, and they, I don't know if they got back with me the same day or maybe it was the next day. It depends sometimes on how long they'll get back to you, how long it'll take. I didn't approve those files because I think in the back of my head, I thought there was one last thing I wanted to change. I would not approve those files because if you don't approve it, you can just re-upload a new version and it's fine. If you do approve it, you either have to pay again or use a coupon code. Like I have a coupon code um, and I just didn't want to go through the hassle of trying to find it again. So I didn't approve it right away. That was my mindset behind that because I wanted to up like, update new files. And so it was the 18th when I realized, shoot, um, I forgot to upload those files and my deadline was the 17th and I was stressing out. That is also not the case because I was I was late already regardless. 
Um, so that clip was me on the 18th, I believe I said, and it didn't matter because by then I was still, I was, I was late even on Valentine's day. Um, what I needed to do is upload the files on Valentine's day, approve them, and then, you know, be all set. Uh, like I said, I have no one to blame it myself. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and blame somebody else for my stupid planning. I've had a lot of terrible family things happening, you know, these past few weeks that I don't share. I don't share family stuff personally, but stuff's been going on. It's been very stressful. On top of a release, my brain has just been filled with like so much going on. And I mean, in that one vlog, I was crying in it. And so you saw my stress there. So stress over ARCs, over pre-orders for the next book, um, family health issues, people in the hospital. Um, it's just been a lot. And so I think that all just kind of scrambled my brain leading up to release day. It's, and that, you know, it, it, it's stuff happens. It's terrible, but, um, we just have to keep going. So even though in the moment, this whole paperback issue felt like the end of, end of the world, um, it just kind of reminded me of how human I am. <laughs> um, so for those who said they, I look like I have it all together, I genuinely don't friends. <laughs> Oh, I, I feel like this is like the universe's way of trying to say, hey guys, no, Sarah doesn't have it all together. But then again, that's why you we've coined the phrase, it's not a Sarah Sutton release unless something goes wrong. But don't worry to those who did pre-order the paperback. Um, if you get a copy with an acknowledgement, because I actually did ax the acknowledgement. So um, if your copy does have an acknowledgement, you'll know right away that it's not the final copy. Um, I'm willing to do uh, whatever I can to make it right, whether that sends you a gift card for the exact amount, whether that um, sends you a replacement paperback, whether you just want an ebook version of the book. It sucks, you know, Making mistakes like this sucks. I'm glad it was the paperback proof and not paperback pre-order and not the ebook pre-order because ebook pre-order, I have 107 um, pre-orders, but I believe paperback is only about 10, I believe. Um, also, it should be fixed now. So if you pre-order now, it should be totally fixed, um, you know, and there is the chance that it's not going to be an issue anyway. I believe also I want to asterisk this. If you did pre-order a paperback, it might be shipping delayed. I pushed the paperback pre-order a week to just in case get those files like time to generate and print that way. So I know that's not ideal to have it a week delayed, but also is it not ideal to have it a week delayed or do you want an unproved copy? Do you know what I mean? So there is a chance, you know, probably... And I don't even know how much of a percent of a chance, 50% chance. Um, it, it really could be a totally okay paperback. So I am just kind of keeping my fingers crossed on that front. Um, but like, the, it, it's just me not knowing what's going on, not knowing what's going to happen. So I hope that you guys get perfect paperbacks and, you know, you don't have typos and you don't have acknowledgements from the wrong book in the back of the book. Um, not that many people look at acknowledgements anyway. <laughs> it's the typos that really do bother me because I remember there were quite a few that made me like actually facepalm. If you ever have an issue, you know, and it feels like the end of the world, it's not, um, it's going to be okay. You know, if, if people don't understand, there's nothing you can do, but you're human you know, a lot of us are a one-person show. Like, aside from editors and stuff, it is just us um, uploading files, you know, doing the marketing, doing all the stuff. And it's a lot sometimes, you know. And sometimes you're going to mess up the dates that you have. Sometimes you're going to think, you're, you're going to think the wrong date is your deadline, you know, and, and that's okay. Sometimes you're going to forget to approve your paperback pre-order for the final version. It's, it sucks. It's stinky, but you just keep going, you know? It's not the end of the world. If I have to send 10 people a replacement copy, I have to send 10 people a replacement copy. If I have to send gift cards to those who are overseas and stuff, you know, that's, that's, that is what it is, and it's okay. You know, it's a lot of money, like, if you think about it, but it's, it's, in the grand scheme of things, it's just a bump in the journey and it's going to be okay. It's just, it's kind of like, like the, on a roller coaster, you can't just always go up, you know, you have to have some dips, you know? So even though the dips aren't fun and they're scary and like you scream on the way down, it's going to be okay. You're going to go back up soon. It's going to be all all right. I wanted to interject here 
because I, like I said, didn't explain it very well. And for those of you who don't know the process of, of approving an Ingram Smart file, you might have thought that's weird that I didn't approve it right away. But sometimes it does take a day plus to generate and send back to you. And I can't remember what it was for me for this because literally I was just panic mode. And at that point, I didn't look at email dates and stuff. So Bang with the Bad Boy comes out on Tuesday. And I'm excited and I cannot wait for you guys to see what it's about. Um, the early reviewers are loving it so far. And that's super exciting. Um, like I said, the paperback pre-orders probably will be delayed. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. I mean, honestly, like I said, in terms of it being delayed or having an unproved version, I feel like I would probably prefer to be just delayed you know so that's me signing off here thank you guys so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed it i'm sarah sutton i'm the indie author of eight soon to be nine young adult romance books and i will see you guys next time bye